All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the next episode of The Voice Artist. Today we got a special guest, Mark DiCarlo, um, best known for his role as Hugh Neutron on Jimmy Neutron. Hello, Mark. Thanks for being here. Hey, Joe. How are you? Doing well. How about yourself? Uh, you know, the world is crazy, but um, other than that, it's not quite as crazy inside my house as it is outside. So I'm just trying to keep a positive attitude and um, wait this out. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. I can't say the craziness has not gotten inside my house, but then again, it might have already been there to begin with. Right. You know, it's hard to tell with craziness because it's so crazy. Isn't it, though? <laughs> I was just is. born into the crazy. So um, let's start off. Just, Others uh, aspire to crazy. You were born into it. Yeah. Yeah. My, my family's a whole lot of crazy. My friends are a whole lot of crazy. I work in a restaurant. My friends came in uh, on our uh wing night my friend couldn't help himself but to get up and wave the chicken wing in front of my uh co-worker's face saying it's so meaty i got some weird ass friends <laughs> that's all i could say you know what it keeps life interesting joe oh, i'd rather be sure. i'd rather have weird than boring this is true this is true that's that guy's my best friend since kindergarten so uh can't say i don't love that man well then i think he's earned the right to wave a wing in your face <laughs> oh. he's earned the right yeah, I guess so. I, I'll give it to him. Shout out to you, Paul. So, um, everyone knows Mark DeCaro's most famous role is Hugh Neutron. Um, there's a lot of roles he's had in live action and other cartoons and even other roles on Jimmy Neutron. Mark, do you mind giving a bit of um, a, vo a voice over a showcase of some of your uh, favorite lines from your favorite characters? Uh, boy, it's hard to remember the lines, you know, because we do them and then a year later the show comes out. Uh, if you're talking about a cartoon and then the only reason I know that the lines are sticking is because people will come up to me on the street and say stuff and then I realize like oh the whole circle has closed um, Sugar Booger is a good one from Hugh Neutron hey, Sugar Booger come quick Jimmy's new show is Funkerific uh, he loves pies and pies and ducks for some reason <laughs> but hey look at all the pie yes I will do it I will live. Um, uh, I got to play a chimp on uh, Barnyard, a space chimp. That's right. That was really fun. That was right. um, and I've done a bunch of other little weird uh, uh, roles. I've been in most of the Thumb movies. We did Thumb Tannic, Thumb Wars, Bat Thumb. Um, the God Thumb, my favorite, and there's a new there's a new uh, Star Wars or new Thumb Wars movie coming out this year uh, that is in three. It's uh, 4K, really gorgeous looking, um, funny, full length feature Thumb Wars X film. So uh, we're waiting for Steve Odenkirk to get that out, and uh, that'll be a big, big fun release. It's just been a weird kind of eclectic. Uh, coterie of characters Do you, uh, does, to play. Does Steve always call you on when he has a, a new show going on? Because you seem to be one of his favorites. Yeah, I've been lucky. I've done all of them. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't... I mean, Blair Thumb I wasn't in because it was just like two people. But yeah, we we, um, we like working with each other. I think he's hilarious and uh, weird and just a, <laughs> a... He thinks out of the box. I don't think he has a box. He doesn't think out of the box. He thinks past the box and is always doing something really wild and interesting so uh it's always fun to work with steve odenkirk for sure great great i don't know the man but uh so hopefully i'll get a chance to he sounds like a really cool guy uh he's a very cool guy big uh, very very talented writer you know did the um, ace ventura movies and patch adams and did he uh, really i didn't know a, that. a lot of other i know no he, he writes all these big mainstream movies and then he does all these weird projects uh under his own label and uh, he's got an eclectic career as well, but he's always doing something funny. Awesome. Can you give, um, I, I know Hugh Neutron, you might probably have more recognition of lines, kind of like the setup you got into when you were doing this character and then uh, do, do some of the execution of the lines, uh, any kind of way? Yeah, well, um, they originally told me about the show and you know that was this really smart kid and they needed a dad for the show. And, um, one of the producers on the show is a friend of mine named Paul Marshall, who kind of talks like Hugh Neutron. So I patterned Hugh's halting 
uh, speaking patterns after uh, my friend Paul, because he's he has the attention span of a hummingbird, <laughs> which I thought was funny, and I figured either the father of a genius would either be super smart or super ditzy, and I thought ditzy is funnier than smart. Yeah, I mean. Einstein was great, but he doesn't have a lot of great jokes. Even geniuses have to eat. What if the guy who invented penicillin had let his sandwich get all moldy? What? What are you looking at me for? So, um, just kind of did it that way, and um, uh, people seem to enjoy it. Oh, God, I know I did. That that was probably the best part of watching any episode. Uh, the, the, my favorite moment was probably... He was just always so clueless. He really was, but it was so like innocent too. He wasn't trying to be an idiot. It is just part of his playful personality, and that was just the best part. The best part probably right. had to be when they were on the right. game show in space, and uh, all the parents are freaking out. This is terrible. This is terrible. We gotta get the kids back. I could see every bead of sweat on your f kid's face, man. Look at these other channels. Check out this. This show's great. And they're like scream at him to turn it back. He's like, I just want to watch a commercial. I know, the reception is amazing! I can see every bead of sweat on your terrified son's face, Weezer. <laughs> and if you like this, you'll love the new soap opera I found, Andromeda 90210. Turn it back! That was probably my favorite yeah. moment. Yeah, that was a wild, wild film. That film was uh, nominated for an Oscar for Best Animated Picture. Was it Windless and Kaboom? It was either 2001 or 2002, and we lost to the first Shrek movie, which... I think it was probably a good call. That was a great movie. It was as a great well. movie, yeah. I like Jimmy Neutron better. But yeah, it was a good call. If only you were one of the voters. Gosh darn. What are you going to do? Um, can you give a little bit of background <laughs> how you got into animation, the entertainment industry overall? Just like, how, What were your beginnings? Um, I found out in high school that you could make a living doing comedy, so that's what I decided to do. And then I went to school at UCLA. And started doing stand-up with a bunch of guys who have since gone on to be big-time film writers. Um, and uh, fell, I've, I've always enjoyed uh, comedy, so I was doing that. And then uh, I'm from Chicago originally. And when Second City opened up a theater here in Santa Monica, I was uh, one of the. I was a founding member of the theater and of the touring company uh, for Second City in Santa Monica. And I did that and I learned how to improvise and um, just started doing that and started doing cartoon or commercials and um, acting jobs. And then uh, we were doing, I had my own improv group called the Frayed Knots and we were doing a show in Long Beach, California. And this guy comes up to us after the show and says, hey, I, I run a college down in Orange County. I want you guys to come in and we'll make a pilot. And that guy was this Paul Marshall guy who oh. ended up producing Jim Tron years later and uh we just kind of hit it off we have the same warped sense of humor <laughs> and um the relationship began one cool thing about when we would do jimmy neutron is uh unlike most of the shows that are done today we would all record together in the same room so we could do we would do the script as written once and then we would do what we call a fun pass and that's when everyone would improvise and throw in lines that they had thought uh either in the minute or beforehand to try and crack everybody else up. And unlike most shows, they ended up using a big chunk of the improv uh, stuff that we would throw in because we had a really funny, clever cast. Jeff Garcia, really funny stand-up. Uh, Megan Cavanaugh from A League of Their Own. Rob Paulson, who's... Um, Just a voice acting legend. Pinky in the Brain, and he's Yakko on Animaniacs. He is a voice acting legend. Uh, Candy Milo, uh, another big voice actor Debbie Derryberry plays Jimmy so we had really a really good cast of actors and uh, people that like to improvise do you have a special memory Someone's... with any of them and uh, anyone specifically or a time you guys were all on the booth together and uh, something just happened and really worked well and you know it was just memorable to you you know what every day was always fun we'd go in and uh, we would record a, one episode in four hours and all my my memory is I would just laugh all day long because the people were so funny and the scripts were so funny um, and the ideas were so funny it was a joy to uh, go to work and and uh, do those shows we're hoping that uh, Nickelodeon brings the show back and uh, we we can end up doing more there's definitely a big cult following I'm definitely behind they got Twitter you know a bunch of people with Jimmy Neutron revival pages 
Um, I, th there's people all over talking about it, and you know, um, I, I, I was sure a lot of people were excited when they did the spinoff from Planet Sheen, but then a lot of people were disappointed with it. So I, I don't know. There's a lot of revivals coming back, and um, I'm hoping that ends up being one of them, and people look forward to that. So you know, you never know. Crazier things have happened. Yeah, we did a we did a panel. That's true. We did a panel at uh, Comic Con LA last year, uh, and it was sold out, packed. And uh, I think we're going to do it again this year. We may do some other Comic Cons around the country if there's even Comic Cons this year. You know, I yeah. don't think, I, I don't know that there will be. It's no disrespect to you, honestly, but people don't know this. Sometimes Jesus will sit with me and we'll call up a Best Buy and say, Is your refrigerator running? Uh, you know, we're all friends. We see each other often, um, not lately, but uh, yeah. we've stayed in touch. And uh, it's a really funny, funny group of people. Very clever. Uh, I was really lucky to be in that in that uh, company. Hi, all. Just really quickly, the reason we just skip topics pretty much to what I'm about to talk about in the uh, interview is because I had to get some working papers. I took a pause for a second. Uh, not much info to know. Just know we had to skip topics because there was a pause. Thanks. I'm working at Dairy Queen around the corner now. So uh, he has to send my birth certificate. I love to me. Dairy Queen. You dip, you, you do the chocolate uh, vanilla swirl, swirls and you dip them in the chocolate? Yeah. Mm. I, I'm the big man that gets to do that now. Aren't I special? DQ, baby. DQ. Mm hmm. <laughs> I love DQ. DQ means summer. It does. You're right. I love summer so much. And you know, I know it's going to be a weird summer this year. It really is. I'm really hoping things are letting up. Things are starting to open. Things are starting to go back to normal to some sort of extent. So, uh, something to look forward to. This is my last yeah. summer before I hit college. So, hoping hoping to hang out with people when I can. You never know. Exactly. Enjoy it, Joe. I will. Time goes by so fast. Yeah, sure seems that way. My me and my girlfriend are together five months next week, and it feels like it's been a week. So, uh, Corona feels like it just started yesterday. Well, five months, Joe. So, yeah. Have you seen her since the lockdown started? She was uh, she was hanging out with me today. She won't get off my Nintendo Switch for some reason. <laughs> she she's more into that than she is it's hanging out with Switch. me. It's, it's Switch. She's ha she's with me for the Switch. I swear <laughs> to you. <laughs> right. Well, five months is a big thing. Are you, are you planning any kind of big anniversary? You got to do something. I'm trying to. Her parents fucking suck. <laughs> yeah, they're more concerned about the corona shit and keeping her there and whatnot. We just got a pool in last year, so she wanted to come over and use that, and she's barely been uh -huh. able to. She's She calls it using the pool illegally because her parents have no idea she's using it. So I'm trying to work around as much as I can. It's been hitting her hard, too, so. Yeah, well, it's it's I'm you know I, I don't envy you being in high school going through this crap. When I was in high school, uh, we you know, my biggest problem was uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, that was relatable a couple months but ago. But this too shall pass, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. This will be uh, this will be over soon. You'll have hopefully a nice summer and yeah. things will be good. I don't know how they're handling graduation. They were originally going to do it where um we all sent in like a thirty second clip and they put it in like a playlist. I mean, it's a nice thought, but I really figured just send me the diploma at that point and I'll be fine. But I don't yeah. know. Jersey yeah. laws are lifting more and they might be doing something different. It's all up in the air right now. What are you going to do? Yeah, and it's going to be for a while. I wouldn't sweat it. Things will, things will work out. You're, you're going to graduate and then, uh, then life truly begins. Yeah. Excited, though. So that's a good thing. Trying to keep positive. Good. Thank you for that, though. I appreciate that. You're a good guy. Damn right. <laughs> That's what my friend did. But my best friend works actually with my girlfriend down the street at this pizza place, and um, their boss was talking to them. Uh -huh. And Paul, my, my friend Paul, walks away, and my girlfriend was like, "I need to figure this out. George, can you help me? Just ask Paul. He's a genius. Just ask him. He he'll tell you he's a genius." Right. Yeah. Like all true geniuses. All true geniuses. That that genius somehow got me a Carolina Reaper, which is the hottest pepper in the world. I I, I hate him. I don't know how he did it, but he got me to do it. Ah! Ah! Oh 
god, it hurts. <laughs> and? Well, let's say you throw that. Throw up? Uh, no, I didn't throw up, but there's a 20 minute video of me on YouTube screaming. <laughs> And my girlfriend throwing chicken nuggets at me. Oh, yeah. The ghost peppers are hot, but the Carolina Reaper, those are those are. What's the BTU number? You know, they they have numbers for the peppers. Do you know what the, I think the Reaper number is? I think the Scoville is three million or four million. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It's, how it's that a even crazy, happens. crazy number, and I don't get the point. What's the point of having something that hot? You can't enjoy it. Even a little tiny piece. Makes your head explode. I think it's the like point the peppers is, they put in the Chinese food, the little yeah, red peppers. Yeah. Can't eat them. I think the whole point of it is just for stupid people like me to make videos. Like, there's no other use for it. Well, then. It. There's no other good use. Good job, Joe. You did it. Yeah, I think you're right. Honestly, I don't know. But. Uh, that was terrible. It was funny to watch afterwards, but it, it was terrible in the middle of it. No. You're providing entertainment for the world. I try. I try. Take solace in that. I, I do. Uh, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling when, you know, it makes someone's day. I get comments saying, you know, this this is the best 20 minutes of my life, laughing my ass off. I, I just like to make people smile. All right. If, well, my, pain, if, if my pain can make good you smile, I'm happy with it. Exactly. Exactly. Pe people denigrate the, uh, you know what? People have to laugh. It's uh, people that don't laugh are miserable human beings. Oh, and uh, the arts and people that work in... Uh, in that kind of world, we serve a, a an important purpose. It's not as important maybe as no. doctors or other things like that, but I think it's important to to society and to people. You gotta, you know, yeah. Groucho Marx. The world. How different would the world be without Groucho Marx and David Letterman? And you know, there's a shit ton of people that yeah. have influenced the world in a positive way just by making people laugh. And Absolutely. you could be the next one on that list, Joe. You're a really nice guy. I really like you. <laughs> I appreciate everything you just said. Oh, I'm fantastic. You really are. You know, <laughs> you deserve that self high five. Yeah, the the youth are our future, Joe, and you're the youth. Well, so don't you. screw it up. I think the youth in my generation are already doing that. I I don't understand what TikTok is, and I'm 18, and everyone's using it. Really? Yeah. I, oh, I, I don't get the God, point. I thought of I was the only only one. Oh my God, no! I'm the most out of touch person I know. It's just people doing weird, yeah, people doing just weird stuff for six seconds. Is the attention you know, span okay. of everyone that short? Sure? Like, honestly. Yeah, that's what's happening. Crazy world. Going crazy. <laughs> what kind of dog? Yep. She's a Weimaraner. Never heard of that. No, the Weimaraner. I've never, I've never heard of that. Is that, is that They're like the thing? great dogs that William Wegman did the books on. I think I know what you're talking about. I'll have to look She's that weird. up. <laughs> Let's see if I can get her over here. Nola, come. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. Show it to you right now. Nola, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, she's adorable. Right here. Right there. Can you see her? Yeah, I can see her. Yes. Oh, she got pretty eyes. Oh, oh that's delicious. That's delicious, no there. <laughs> now she's happy. I love animals. I had a pet wild turkey, ten cats, nine dogs, all at the same time. So I I'm I shit you not. God. Yeah. The pet turkey was the best though. She would That's sit a zoo. She, Tell me about it. This is like my big brag growing up. I have a turkey and you don't. So I mean, she was cool. She would sit on your lap and like <laughs> fall asleep as you pet her. It was like Did having a dog. Do tricks? Yeah, actually, I would have her spin around and then she would jump up and grab food out of my hand. She would do anything for food. It's funny as shit. That's cool. Yeah. And what happened to the turkey? Um, well, we had her for a good amount of time, a couple of years, and um, I came home from school one day and she was like acting really weird. She was like sticking her tongue out and like. And turns out she had upper respiratory distress. And when poultry have it, oh. they only last like an hour with it. And it was with all the changing weather patterns. And she was getting warm and oh, all of a sudden it went cold. And... Yeah. Poor thing. What are you going to do? That's sad. Yeah. My best inspiration came from not only watching Hugh Neutron fall from the sky and spit back up ice cream I already ate, but uh, just life experiences and having these animals and crazy shit like that so 
I'm glad I could be a small part of it. You really worry. I don't think you guys ever understand what, what impact you have. Like, I'm going to school for this. I want to do this. I voice act for my animated series on the side. I work with board artists who work on SpongeBob and Doug Lawrence, who's a senior writer on it, and, you know, creator of Rocco's Modern Life and this and that. And you guys are all, like, the nicest people. But I don't think you realize what impact you guys make on us. I, I, I don't know if you do, but without it, Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron uh, was actually my yeah, you know, we work. One these Comic Cons that we go to, yeah, we we see it, you know, and you know we're we're fans too, you know. I got to meet Chuck Jones once, and I was, I didn't know what to say to him. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you invented my sense of humor, <laughs> you know. Uh, the, the, that's one of the cool things about the Comic Cons is we see, um, we see the p the people the fans that pay our salaries and who watch our stuff and who really enjoy it. So we, uh, we, we, we get it, we understand it. And I think more so than regular actors, voice actors appreciate it because, um, we're fans too. And you have to be like, you could be just a cute, cute guy or a girl and you'd come to Hollywood and probably get some acting jobs, but to be a voice actor, you actually have to be good. Yeah. Um, because the competition is so, so, uh, virulent and, um, I think once you're in that club, you see that everybody else in there is pretty nice and cool and very, very talented. So it's it's a it's a great way to make a living. So uh, if you really want to do it and you keep working at it, I'm sure you'll be very successful as long as you enjoy what you're doing and you uh, um, you know you try and make it better, invent the next thing, yeah, and I, whatever that's going to be in animation. I can't say I've ever had more fun doing anything than what I'm doing. Uh, we actually got uh, one of our animated episodes uh, shown at a college, a local college, um, back in February on the big screen, on the TV screen, they did a Q&A after. I felt like I was at Comic-Con. I felt like this is amazing, and I want to keep making people you know, smile and have fun and be able to ask these questions because they enjoy it so much and have such a good time. It's It was a totally new experience that I always hoped I would get, but never knew when it would happen or if it would happen. And um, it, it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun. And uh, I, I hope to keep continue doing that. Yeah, to sit there and hear people laughing at your stuff. Yeah. In a big it's, theater, it's fun. It really is. Uh, it's something I never had before. I mean, like I've shown, you know, like the family or friends some videos. And it, this this is not a packed theater, but rows upon rows are filled in this. And me and my friend are sitting back like, I wrote this episode, I animated it, and I had him help me voice act. And... They're having a good time watching. It was a longer episode, but it didn't drag. No one was looking like they were bored. And, you know, you, you feel that sense of accomplishment when people react well. And uh, I hope to keep continue doing that and, uh, you know, see where this goes. Yeah, it's very gratifying to, to uh, you know, work hard on something and have people see it. Typically in cartoons, the, 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 the timeline is so stretched out because, you know, typically – with a TV series, you record something, then you then you cut it, then you send it to the animators, and nine months later, it's ready to be seen. Yeah. Um, there's new animation now, techno technology, where you can do it instantaneously, and I'm I'm really enjoying uh, that kind of stuff because it's you can deal with people in real time, and it freaks them out. <laughs> you mean like with Bafo when you put on that animated head? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this character I do called Bafo the Bear. We do a live uh, show every day on Facebook. First time in history that a cartoon has ever hosted a live broadcast of any kind. And we take phone calls and we interview people and it's live, live, live. And uh, um, it's really fun and uh, it's been fun working with uh, my partner. We started an animation studio called Amazing Cartoon Factory and Bafo was our first show. Uh, and uh, we have a couple other things that we're working on now during this uh, downtime. But it's um, animation, I think, is where all the cool stuff in, in entertainment is happening because of the democratization of the technology. With yeah. you know an iPhone and a computer, you can make a feature film. It's crazy that one is you'd be able to do that. It's amazing. It really is. And actually, kind of yeah. bring, that kind of brings me to my next question. Uh, how did Bafo even come about? Where, where did this idea come from? Well, I've hosted a bunch of uh, shows on regular TV, you know, with this face, uh, and I've done a lot of cartoons, so I wanted to come up with a show where I could use both of my uh, uh, skills. 
for lack of a better word, you know, hosting shows, interviewing people, and doing cartoon voices. So we, we came up with this character named Buffo the Bear, who's a show business comedy legend. And um, along with uh, uh, my partner, who was the um, executive creative director of Digital Domain, which is a big motion capture company out here, um, we've come up with this technology that allows us to go live to air. Uh, and I just sit in front of a special camera with special software, and it turns me into this bear, and the bear is able to talk to people. And um, we're on YouTube and Facebook, and uh, he's just a big, full of himself blue bear uh, who. Oh, I'm wearing his t shirt. Ah, there he is. That's the buff. Um, and it's it's uh, really fun, and we think it's the next the next uh, stage of animation. So mm -hmm. there's no nine month gap. It's instantaneous. Uh, goes out on television or over the digital uh, platforms or on the web, uh, and no one's ever been able to do it ever before. Yeah. So I mean, I, we're I kind never, of on the cutting edge, yeah. and uh, people are starting to notice. I mean, I, I never uh, knew this was even a thing. I, I know they had like the iPhone, like little like filters and crap, and on Facebook Messenger you could do stuff like that. But um, when I f first started talking to you and got in contact with you, I found out. <laughs> Uh, Bafa through your page, and I thought it was just the coolest thing ever. You could make your own little character, talk to people. I mean, I I thought it was, I thought it was incredible. And I've seen um other videos with Bafa on it, like a what what was the one where he was like in this box or something? Yeah, we did a live event at uh, L.A. Comic Con last October in 2019, and we and we did a, a Whose Line Is It Anywhere show with voice actors. So we called it Whose Voice Is It Anywhere, and. Fred Tattashore was in it, Phil Lamar, Candy Milo, and uh, Mo LaMarche, Maurice LaMarche, and Bafo hosted it from inside a box. Um, a, uh, it's called a uh, portal box, and it allowed us to project the character into this box, full body character, and he was interacting with the audience and hosting the show. It had never been uh, done before. Um, how and that, that's, how that, that was our first work? project for Amazing Cartoon Factory. How did that even work? I was just baffled, um, what, baffled I, by how that worked. Yeah, it's pretty, I mean, it's never, ever been done before. So um, we're kind of inventing it as we go along. But at, at that particular thing, at Comic-Con, I was backstage, and I had a, I was wearing a helmet with a camera on my face and cameras on my body so that as I moved, the character moved and the face moved. And then you send that signal out to this uh, screen, basically, that's in the box, and it makes it look like the bear is there in the box. Um, and he was in the box because he he was uh, he was contagious from something that he caught, so he had to be separated from people. Um, and it all happens in real time, so he can talk to the people on stage. He could talk to the people in the audience. Um, that's awesome. And it was a big hit. It was the place was packed. It was sold out and. Uh, we're hoping that we get to do it again this year. Uh, if there's a Comic Con, we will. At this point, this Comic Con is scheduled for the 22nd of September in LA. Uh, we're hoping that it's going to happen, but um, I think they're still uh, deciding if it's going to be safe to do it or not. Mm. Yeah, you know, makes sense. I, everything's getting postponed, everything's getting canceled left, right, and sideways. But I'm, I'm really just hoping things clear up. By summer, midsummer, you know, if things are supposed to be warmer, it, it, it should clear up, and hopefully, early fall, September time, things will still be clear enough to, you know, have some fun. We hope so. We had a really good time doing it last year. We'd love to do it again. Krista Mullen and all the people over at uh, the uh, LA Comic Con, our, our Comic Con LA, uh, are super people, and they're really huge fans of animation, and I know that they really enjoy putting on this. Con and um, we're all in their corner, hoping that we'll be able to do it. Yeah, I, I hope so too. I don't, I don't know if I'd be able to make it to LA, but hell, I, I definitely love to watch any uh, replay, anything captured from that. Yeah, they live, they live streamed it. They live streamed it, and they'd, uh, they'll probably live stream it again this year. Awesome. You guys have anyone in mind that you'd want to come to uh, be on the voice acting panel? Anyone different, or like same people from last year? I don't know. Um, I know a lot of really funny people in the uh, comedy cartoon world. Maybe we'll have the same people. Maybe we'll have different people. I don't know. It, it all depends on who feels like doing it and what their schedules are. And uh, Here's a funny story. Maurice LaMarche, one of the funniest guys uh, I know, mm -hmm. he plays the brain on Pinky and the Brain. He's all over Animaniacs. He's a 
he's a very, very, very experienced Emmy-winning um, yeah. voice actor. Uh, and I called him. I said, you know, I want you to do this show, Mo. And he goes, okay. And then he called me back later in the day, and he goes, I'm afraid. I, I don't know how to improvise. I, I, what if I'm not funny? I'm like, dude, you're one of the funniest people I know. Just relax. And then, of course, he does the show, and he was great. He does the brain, and he Naturally, did uh, yeah. his Orson Welles, and he did uh, a bunch of different characters and, you know, killed it along with Phil and Candy and, um, and Freddie. Yeah, awesome. They're actually all in a new movie um, with my partner, writing partner, Ryan Rowe. We rebooted the Pinocchio movie, and uh, oh, shit, really? it's called Pinocchio and the Water of Life. It was supposed to come out at Christmas this year, but it's uh, not going to be out in 2020. It'll probably come out um, next spring, I think. But uh, we have Tom Kenny as the voice of Pinocchio. Oh, sweet. Uh, Mo and uh, Rob Paulson play a couple of uh, rats. Really great cast, really fun story. Beautiful animation from a studio in Spain and uh, Estonia and Russia called uh, VFX Animation Studios. Beautiful stuff. So we're looking forward to that next year. That's awesome. That'll be That's, cool. I, I can't wait to see that. I'm definitely going to watch it. Tom Kenny as Pinocchio sounds like the best idea I've ever heard in my life. That's the one person I've been unable to figure out how to yeah. contact. I want to get him on this show and like get in contact with him so bad. He seem, he just seems like the nicest person. Do you have any? He's any, ridiculously any, nice. Like, like, any time I've ever seen him at a he's, Comic he's, Con, it's it's like he'll give you the shirt off his back kind of guy. Yeah, he's really nice and and very talented. Has a great band called Tom Kenny and the High Seas. They yep. play uh, they play conventions and they play here in L.A. a lot. Um, yeah, he's he's uh, exactly the guy you probably think he is. He's super nice. I think um, most, if not all, of the really popular and famous voice actors that I know are grateful to have this job yeah. because it takes all the crappy stuff about acting away. You don't have to go in early and get made up. You don't have to sit around while they're shooting something else. You go in, you talk, you leave, and then you come back months later and you see this feature film or you see the cartoon, whatever it is, and it's all, all everyone else has put their work into it to animate it and bring it to life. And it's just, um, because it's such a collaborative art form, I think if you're not a nice person, people don't yeah. want you around and you stop working, you know? Makes sense. Makes sense for sure. That kind of, uh, kind of sort of answers my uh, next question. Do you prefer the, the live action work or working on the game shows you've hosted or are you more of the in the box voiceover kind of guy? Um, I've done both. Uh, they're, they're, you know, you can have, I, I like doing movies. I like doing live action stuff, but I think the most fun I've had for sure is animation be because I can be a 400 pound walrus. I can be a pencil. I can be whatever I want to yeah. be as a, cartoon as a human i'm stuck with this body and you know they're not going to hire me to play a swedish girl <laughs> um but in animation you really let your imagination go wild and it's always comedy you know there's not a lot of drama animation at least none that i've done mm. so it's always a fun time and and um uh fun people and you know everyone's got to work but if you can go to work and laugh your ass off all day and then come home i think that's that's a that's a victory Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with that. Do you um do you have any favorite role you've done on camera or uh, any favorite game show you've ever hosted, anything like that? Or um, a separate question, uh, but, uh, do you also have a favorite character you've voiced? Well, uh, I would say either Hugh Neutron or Baffo the Bear are my favorites, just because they're both weird and... Uh, kind of freewheeling yeah um that's a way to put it <laughs> as far as live action stuff uh, yeah i i hosted a travel food show on the travel channel for four years that was fun called taste of america i got to travel around and meet a lot of cool people um but it was much harder work than doing cartoons hmm. uh, because of all the travel which was also part of the plus you know what uh, if you get into show business you kind of have to take things as they come and i've been lucky that i've had a bunch of great opportunities to work with really cool people and you know make some fun shows that people seem to dig so uh any any job is a fun job yeah, yeah that's until it isn't 
Yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more on that one. What was um, what, what was the experience like when you first got into voice acting? Like, what was your first character, and what, what was that uh, like to you? The first thing I did, I was 12 years old in sixth grade, and I was in Chicago, and I got hired to do an industrial um, voiceover for uh, an educational series of s film strips, I think, or something. For, like, educational, I had to play this kid who... I had a sick cow, and the doctor came to his house. And I'd never been in a recording studio before. I was in downtown Chicago, and was all freaky and didn't know anybody. <laughs> Took me 57 takes. 57. I just, I was awful. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, it was awful. Hey, um, lucky number 57. And, uh, right, yeah. They must have been pulling their hair out. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. I, I'm assuming it came out, but I, I've never heard it. I would love to hear it. Oh, you never hear even how heard horrible it, it was. And, no, I don't even know how to track it down. Uh, and then um, uh, I started doing. Um, I did some commercial voiceovers. I did a bunch of commercials. I did some sort of animated commercials for Foster's Beer, where I was in full body cartoon makeup, um, for lack of a better term. I had a big like cartoon head on, and right. a big fake body and did a bunch of commercials for them. And then um, I think the first regular TV show I did was Duckman with Jason Alexander on a um, long, long, long time ago. And I was like, wow, I could do this every day. This would be fun. <laughs> Look at you now. And it has been. Yeah. Right. I was looking just through some IMDB stuff so I look up some things I could ask you. Uh, I found well, you were on a lot of game shows as a contestant. And you won like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars or some shoot on Sale of the Century and uh, some dull. I am the all-time champion on Sale of the Century. Are you really? That's amazing. Yep, I had, I had, I had just graduated from UCLA, uh -huh. and I went on this game show, and I was on for eleven days in a row, and I won one hundred and fifteen grand, and haven't had a real job since. Damn. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. What was the experience? So like I recommend that to all you graduates. Go out and go out and go on a game show and win a pile of money, and then you don't have to work. Shit! Now I gotta figure out how to get on a game show. That that that'll, yeah. that'll pay get almost on that, Joe. that'll pay almost double my uh, um, tuition for the next three years. I could I could go for one hundred fifteen grand. Okay. Yeah, yeah, be more, probably be more now. Probably yeah. a million dollars. Damn! Just pick your game shows carefully. <laughs> Pick the one I can actually win, not Baffles Big Shot. When I watched the episode last week, and I'm like, oh, I, I, I can do this. This, this isn't like I knew the Rat Pack. They don't know the Rat Pack. I come right. and then yeah. I come, and then I come on. Then oh, it's I, the, I, I come on a week later, and I'm like, well, <laughs> uh, well. It's the luck of the draw, my friend. Yeah, I luck of the draw. Uh, how did you become a huge part of the Windy City Live show? Uh, like I said, I'm from Chicago, and we were launching this show back in 2011. Oprah Winfrey had just gone off the air, and our show took her place, and everyone thought we would last six weeks. Um, it's kind of like the Good Morning of America of the Midwest, mm -hmm. Chicago and the surrounding areas. And um, the producers of the show reached out to me and wanted me to be the, like the man-on-the-street comedian guy, which... Uh, I loved the opportunity to go back to Chicago and, and um, shoot stuff there. So I've been doing that nine years now. I um, haven't been back in a while because of this lockdown. Mm. But uh, very fun show to do. And it's live TV. Again, it's you go out, you do it, then you're done, and then you go to Wrigley Field and kill the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, How often did you do that? Uh, you know what? Basically, everything I've done, uh, I would go back once a month. Gotcha. And I'd tape a bunch of stuff and do some live things. Um, basically, everything I've done has sprung from my Second City education, which is kind of like my graduate school. They teach you how to write, how to direct, how to act, how to improvise. And all of those skills have been very useful in the cartoon world and anything else that I've been doing because uh, you don't get flustered. Mm. If you, you know, if what we're doing right now is we're improvising, basically. I don't know what you're going to ask me. You don't know what I'm going to say, 
But if you say the word improv to an actor, a lot of them freak out and they go, oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you do it every day. Yeah. You know, you just have to relax and, um, you know, you learn a couple little rules and then it's uh, 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 pretty straightforward after that once you know what you're doing. And the biggest problem is people get nervous. So if you don't get nervous, it's a lot easier. Abs oh, God, I, I know that um, just from experience of going up on stage when we had our Q&A and we showed our show off um, in, in the theater. And I'm, I'm like walking to the stage from the back of the theater and my legs are shaking. I get up on stage and I actually slap myself out of this and everything is just that much easier. So, so much better of a feeling. <laughs> And you're able to, you know, come up on the spot. Yeah, well, everyone in the off, uh, everyone in the audience, everyone wants you to be entertaining. They want you to be good. No one's looking for you to fail. Yeah. So you just have to uh, take a deep breath and enjoy the process. Yeah. That's ab absolutely it. And that, I feel like that's with anything. You can't go into anything too, too over, you know, over your head, too underconfident, any kind of thing like that. You know, just go in there and do what you got to do and let it happen. Um, right, exactly. Yeah. Now, I know earlier we talked about being uh, uncultured in a way. I don't know the first thing about TikTok, but are you aware of um, the online presence um, Jimmy Neutron has with memes, like the Hugh Neutron memes, and uh, there's, there's even a video that came out a couple months ago that's been blowing up on Twitter and um, on YouTube called a historic battle where there's two Hue Neutrons battling with Pokemon and then they start like uh, sharing pie together. I gotta send you the link to this. I found it hilarious. Um, no, I'm not aware of it. I would love to see it. Yeah, it sounds funny. Oh my god, it's amazing. I, I, I definitely will send this to you afterwards. But um, it's become such a huge thing in, cult in the pop culture world and I feel something that like, you know, SpongeBob has been going on so long because the younger audience that grew into the generation that it is now took that with them and grew this huge meme culture, and that's why it's still so iconic. And I feel like that's kind of happened with Jimmy Neutron yeah. too. And um, I don't know how much of this you've ever seen around, but there, there's there's a lot of it. Uh, most of the time, I've seen little pieces, bits and pieces here and there. There there is definitely a good amount of it, and um, uh, Hugh Neutron and Carl Weezer are points of interest there i went down my youtube where recommended page the other day and the first thing that comes up is carl weezer reads the entire b-movie script for an hour and a half i don't know i i don't know either this is what people found interesting there was and it's some guy doing carl's voice it's some guy doing carl's voice the entire b-movie for at least an hour and a half, and it's got like over hundreds of thousands of views. I, Are you kidding me? I swear, I, I, I shit you not, dude. It's amazing what I the we world need. Is. How can I get a hundred thousand views for a Baffle the Bear video? That's my question. Read the entire B movie script. Answer me that. Re, re, Baffle reads the entire yeah. B movie script. There you go. I, I well, bears know. love honey. <laughs> this is true. Or at least that's what Winnie the Pooh says. We're, we're, no, I know Carl's a very popular character because um, Rob's so funny. Rob is funny. And uh, uh, I've seen a bunch of those. Um, there's a guy named Large McNards on YouTube who does a lot of Carl Weezer videos. So I, uh, I reached out to him and uh, busted his chops a little bit. <laughs> But they're all out there. You know, that's it's uh, it, it, it's it's uh, memery is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah, these days that that's it really is the way to go. I, I gotta say, right? Yeah. Lots of good ones though. There's a lot of dark ones too. The quacking crazy ones. <laughs> yeah. just, just look up Hugh Neutron quacking I've, crazy. You'll I've see seen, what I mean right away. I think I've seen that one, and I've seen the one about the banana dance. And uh, there's a few other ones. I mean, they're all funny. Oh, yeah, they're, they're hilarious. Do you remember the episode they did um, where Hugh, like, became cool? He had, like, a motorcycle and a leather jacket. And uh, th th there's this one. 
where um, he's, he's got his sunglasses like this, and there's two of them that I found hilarious. One of them says, like ducks before they were cool, and the other's, damn girl, you shit with that ass? I... <laughs> I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. My brother brings up, he's like, I gotta show you this, I gotta show you this. I'm like, this better be good, or I'm gonna have to, like, throw you off this freaking deck. I didn't throw him off the deck. It was perfect. I, I made my I like ducks before it was cool. That's funny. <laughs> Best thing ever. <laughs> I on, Honestly, my day was going bad. I'd pull up Jimmy Neutron or a Hugh Neutron meme, and it was, it just makes it so much better. People are creative as hell. We're like medicine. Think of us as medicine, Joe. To soothe your aching heart. <laughs> That's the way I definitely go about it. Uh, you, guys, Good. you guys are great. That's what it's for. It sure feels that way. I don't know what I would do without this kind of shit, honestly. Uh, my life would not be the same in any degree. But um, I have. Well, a, you I, know what? You keep working at it, and, and eventually you'll be one of the guys making it. I sure hope so. I, 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 it's been my dream. Jimmy Neutron is the entire reason I got into this. I originally wanted to become a scientist because of Jimmy Neutron, and then I went back a couple years later after not watching it for a while, and I'm like, you know what would be more fun than that is this. And uh, you know, here, here I am now, uh. fully applied to a uh, cartooning school, uh, getting in contact with everyone I could possibly find, thanking them for everything they've done for me, and. Uh, when I'm lucky enough, I get to do things like this, which I am more than grateful for. So thank you so much for coming on here. Well, that, that's incredibly gratifying to hear. Thank you. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's that enthusiasm that everyone working in the business certainly has when they start. And, con you know, you continue to have it as you expand your career and do more and more things. You have to... I mean, we're not doing brain surgery. We're, make, we're literally making cartoons to make people laugh. Yeah. So, um, you know, even the worst day doing that is better than other days doing pretty much anything else that I can think of because yeah. you're collaborating with people that are all ideally funny and clever, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's been a great career, and and I wish you the best on it. And I think, you know what? Keep this enthusiasm and work hard and and be creative you know you got to feed if you're going to be a writer you got to read a lot of other things and see a lot of other things yeah. so you you know you can draw get ideas um, that are unique and interesting and then tell stories i mean one of the things that people always say to us about jimmy neutron is we made science cool yeah that, that I was you know so it made you want to be a scientist i, I grew up uh yeah on jimmy there, there weren't any other shows like that at the time no no i mean so I, my closet's still full of a ton of science kits I asked for growing up, CSI kind of things, you know, investigations. It, it was stuff like that that made me want to grow up to make a wormhole generator. It, and then eventually I'm like, this is what I really love. Uh, this is what I want to do. And it, it really had made my, a huge impact on how, you know, I went to school and wanted to learn and be hands-on as a person. So, you know. Well, and it's a lot easier to make a wormhole generator in a cartoon than it is in real life. That so too. You're you're that on the right too. track. It takes a lot less schooling, I'm sure, too. Right. Yeah. Great. Right. Um, one final question I just have for you is, um, uh, you kind of answered it a little bit before about you know you'd love to re revive Jimmy Neutron, but was there any show, cartoon, animation, uh, or live action, a game show kind of thing that you know you would want to work on? all the time that that was your favorite and you'd revive it if it isn't around still like, like, what's your best experience uh i think the, the boffo the bear show is something i'd like to do for a long time it's free form uh it's new cutting edge animation it's never been done before and um, it kind of plays into what i like to do interview people and be weird <laughs> um, I could do that forever. I really, I really enjoy doing it, and so far the people that have seen it really like it. So it's a good combo. I only hope one day there'll be Baffo the Bear memes floating around the internet. That's my goal. That's when you know you made it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. When someone mocks you on the internet, you've made it. Oh, by far. That, that like you said, biggest form of flattery these days. 
Memory. Memory. That's my new favorite word. I'm going to bother my girlfriend with it every day. It's memory. Now I'm going <laughs> to use... I'm definitely using that sound clip for something. I don't know what, but I'm going to use that for something. Uh, I want to thank... It's all about the memory, Joe. <laughs> This is the most amazing thing I've ever had in my life. Nothing in my life has been more important than hearing Hugh Neutron say it's all about the memory. It, it, my life's been leading up to this moment for the last 18 years. It all years. leads to this, yeah. I think you're done. You might as well just go to sleep now for a decade. This is this is the pinnacle of your existence, I Joe. I mean, 2020 has been a disaster so far. This is the highlight of the year, and it's probably going to be the highlight of the decade. Yeah, well, it doesn't take much to be the highlight of this year. Not not, but, not, uh, so, not with the way it's going so far. Hopefully there will be more highlights to I exactly. I, I certainly hope so. You know, I really hope things are gonna start going up. Things are calming down a little bit. Well, actually, when I thought things were calming down, that's when I found out people were looting Macy's. Crazy, crazy ass punks. It's uh, you know, there are people out there protesting for a very, very, very good reason, and these scumbags are using that as cover to yeah. steal tennis shoes and break windows. So yeah, that's yeah. I mean, it, it's it's very, it's jokes. very upsetting. You know, to see it's supposed to be for such a great cause. You know, and there's a good cause behind it, but then you got people just throwing shit into cop car and firefighters' windows and looting toilet paper and just just bull crap out of stores. It's oh, what a year. Well, if you go back, if you go back and look at the the news footage from the race riots and the um, Martin Luther King marches back in the '60s. You'll see that it was it was black people and white people yep. holding hands and marching together and moving society forward, and that's what I'm seeing on TV today. It's people of every color and type saying enough is enough and banding together, and that that's the most powerful message and the most powerful force in this country is people of goodwill getting together to stand up for what's right and Absolutely. you know it's your yeah. world now man you're graduating from high school the world is going to be what you make of it so you and your friends i think are on the right track and um hopefully you can fix some of these long festering problems that uh, us old people have not been able to do oh you're not that old <laughs> but uh yeah i mean it's nice to see when the protests go nice unfortunately there are just scumbags out there that are taking advantage of it in the wrong reasons and you know it, it it's a shame yeah, yeah. it is yeah well Thanks. i want to you know thank you for coming on mark uh you're an amazing person you're a really terrific guy you know you make the year better just by uh being here and spreading the good <laughs> word so um uh, it's been a pleasure, Joe. I'm, I'm glad to know you, and I hope you stay in touch and you know keep me appraised of your career, and maybe we can do a cartoon together someday. That'd be fun. That would be absolutely amazing. And I apologize if I message a lot. I feel like I have that problem. I feel like I just message, 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 and I don't want to bother the hell out of you every day. I rarely go on Facebook if I'm not doing the Bafo show, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, sounds great. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, thank you again so much for coming on. Uh, I really appreciate this. You're, you're a really amazing guy, and uh, it's an honor to know you, at, at, most of all. Um, thank you so much for what you've done for me in my life, and, uh, you know, it makes my day so much better when I get to see a Hugh Neutron <laughs> meme or uh, just see a clip from the show. Oh, that's very sweet, Joe. I really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate um, you coming You know on. what? Text me. I have these little Hugh Neutron uh, cards. Text me your... Uh, your address and I'll send you one. Really? That would be great. Uh, sure. Thank you so much. I, I, I mean, not for free. They're $25. <laughs> I'm kidding. I would have given you the money anyway. <laughs> I know. I blew it. I could have bought me dinner. Oh, well. <laughs> thank Don't you so much. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, definitely we'll stay in touch and I hope we uh, do more in the future. Hope to redeem myself on the game show if I get the chance. <laughs> 50, you might. You never know. Twenty-five points because I told Bafo he was like my king. Hey, <laughs> twenty-five points. It always pays points. to flatter the king. It does. It really does. So exactly. I've never thought I'd kiss the ass of a blue animated bear, but I did it. <laughs> Tastes kind of salmony, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> A little salmony.
God, I loved you. You're amazing. It was great talking to you, Joe. Good luck with the show. Good luck with your graduation. And uh, make good cartoons, dude. The world needs them, especially now. Yeah. Th thank you so much for coming on. And good luck with Bafo. Everyone, be sure to check out Bafo's uh, YouTube page. I'll link it down below. Um, and anything else I could find on Mark, be sure to give this man a lot of support. He definitely deserves it. And uh, a lot of amazing things to come out of his uh, new studio. So um, send him some love in the comments. Thanks again for uh, being here. Thanks, Mark. Joe. It was great talking to you. All right. Have a good one, Mark. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.